Kendrick Lamar, legendary rap artist, Compton's favorite son, and his most recent accolade, Drake Slayer. Today I'll be adding another entry to my lyrical recipe series, and as requested by viewers, it is Kung Fu Kenny's turn today. I probably should have made this video like two months ago when the beef was at its peak, because the most recent update was Kendrick doing a jig with his wife in the music video for Not Like Us. But, you know, that's still pretty epic, I'll admit. You know what else is epic? Silly food challenges. My objective today is I'm gonna take Mr. Kendrick Lamar's entire discography. I'm gonna take all the lyrics, I'm gonna shove it into a blender or an oven or both, and then I'm gonna eat the burned, charred, blended remains. Yummers. If you are unfamiliar with this series of two entries now, I'm basically gonna take every lyric that Kendrick himself has rapped across his entire career on every song, on every major album, and I'm going to pick out the ingredients and other food items from them and see if I can make a recipe with those ingredients. I thought Tyler and Kanye were pretty easy because of the wealth of references that they have, but I was listening to Blacker the Berry yesterday and I realized I really only need one lyric actually to do this entire challenge. How convenient! Somehow I imagine going down that route really isn't the best look for me, so I think we'll stay away from that for today. I'll give him the whole Michael Wave experience. It would be wrong to deny him that. Quick overview of the rules for this challenge. I'm going to only be taking lyrics that were rapped by Kendrick himself, not any of his collaborators, but I will include interludes. I also will allow myself to break down compound food terms like jelly beans into jelly and beans, but I can't take food words from inside non-related words, such as getting the word cream from scream. No food category terms like meat or fruit giving me access to everything within its category, and I also won't be tracking animals that are typically not eaten by people or things I can't get at the grocery store like snakes or cats, people, even though they're technically edible. I would say that's the end of the rules typically, but I received actually a nice recommendation on my Tyler video that I try and include an ingredient in the final recipe from each album. So I'll be looking to take ingredients from Section 80, Good Kid Mad City Deluxe, To Pimp a Butterfly, Untitled Unmastered, Damn, and Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. I won't be using the Black Panther soundtrack as that is uh, for a movie. It's not really an album in my opinion and then overly dedicated as a mixtape, so I'm not using that either. If you disagree with that approach, just let me know in the comments below. I'll be sure to respond in an eloquent and kind manner. All right, enough wasting time. Let's go, brother. Kendrick Lamar drink, Kendrick Lamar drink. Kendrick hot take alert, hot Reddit karma farming level opinion coming in. Section 80 is Kendrick's best album. My rationale is actually pretty simple for this. I'm just one of the few people who's managed to break through the Anthony Fantano Rate Your Music collective consciousness, and I've broken the conditioning. We're breaking the conditioning! Ah! Imagine it's 2011, all right? So like Nyan Cat is doing generational level numbers on like the proto internet where cave dwellers used to live. Uh, Kendrick Lamar is 24 and then he goes ahead and he drops this. Let's get to it. Ingredients and other food references from Section 80 include asparagus, syrup and pancakes, duck, eggs, Dom Perignon, which is champagne, sugar from sugar coat, which counts because it's a phrase with food connotations, and because I said so, barbecue, jam, candy, and my personal favorite, plums. You'll start to notice it more as we continue to go through, but Kendrick is a little less quirked up than yes. and Tyler. So this challenge is definitely going to end up being a little bit more complicated. By the way, I completely lied earlier. The actual best Kendrick album is certainly the next one. It would only take a little bit over another year for Kendrick to drop Good Kid Mad City, which is an album that many consider to be the one that cemented him as a heavyweight within the rap game. We'll actually be using the deluxe version of the album, as I previously mentioned, and this is very fitting for the video, as there's actually a song on there, one of my favorites actually, called The Recipe, and there's also a remix for it as well. Despite the song's classic refrain, I don't really have either the first two ingredients in my pantry readily available, uh, unfortunately, and I can't control the weather like Bill Gates can, so I think I'm just gonna stick to getting the ingredients the old-fashioned way by looking at the rest of the lyrics. This album happens to have way more references to food than the previous album, especially meats and alcohol, like beef, steak, goat from Scapegoat, chicken, specifically Church's Chicken, the restaurant, duck, burgers, goose, the bird, but it's technically a reference to Grey Goose Vodka, 
vodka itself, rosé wine, Patron tequila, Hennessy, Remy Red, and standard cognac, and champagne. With all these references in the lyrics, I could fill a swimming pool full of liquor and definitely take a big old dive in it, but I don't really think making jungle juice in my apartment right now and drinking it by myself would be healthy for either my physical or mental well-being. On second thought, it would probably make it easier to talk to the camera. Good Kid Mad City doesn't stop there though, as we have additional references to bread, tea and honey, coke, oranges and soda, hot sauce and ramen, mushrooms from shrooms, and no I'm not cooking with hallucinogens today, corn, banana and banana pudding, jam, cake, and finally now and laters. By the way, I completely lied earlier, the actual best Kendrick album is certainly the next one. Fall. Next up is Kendrick's To Pimp a Butterfly, which I would count as a shining achievement in the catalog of a guy who's already pretty much dominating the 2010s at this point. It's just really unfortunate that years later down the line, we actually learned from Drake Aubrey Graham that this entire album was ghostwritten by Kendrick's cousin, Baby Keem. You know, this is definitely a bad look for Kendrick. Uh, really sad that he kind of like allowed this to happen when he's so against ghostwriting. But it's definitely a great look for Baby Keem, who was actively managing a Minecraft YouTube career at the same time, and was only 14 years old doing this. If only I could have accomplished such feats when I was 14 years old. Alright, hey guys, what's up? It's Mike from the Battle Nations Brothers here today. And um, we are going to be bringing you a top 10 worst nanopod units of all time. By the way, if you're enjoying this so far and have not already, please feel free to hit that subscribe button below. I get your credit card information when you do, and I really need gambling money right now, so please go ahead and hit the red button. Um, I need more money. I'm gonna kill you, give me $200. To Pimp a Butterfly has a solid assortment of ingredients and food references to document, including blackberries and juice, celery, spam, and sardines, chicken, watermelon, and Kool-Aid, duck, bread, hen franklin, goat, milk, turkey, moonshine, and gin, chocolate, and candy. Small spoiler for later, but the ingredients we collect from this album will be foundational for what I choose to make, which I'm sure at this point is probably way different than what you're thinking. Untitled Unmastered serves as sort of like a companion piece to To Pimp a Butterfly, as many fans already know that the tracks here were recordings and demos that were originally made during the To Pimp a Butterfly sessions. Part of the creative process is actually taking ideas, workshopping them, and then really only moving forward with the ones that you feel would work best within a certain body of work or match a certain theme. Um, and I would know, you know, as a, as a food YouTuber. I only mention this because I think it's really an achievement that Kendrick was able to have so much unrefined stuff in the vault that he was able to probably just tweak a little bit and then push out as a full album that a lot of people still enjoy and share it with the fans. I would definitely do this, but you know, it's still early in my career and I don't really think a lot of the early ideas I've had so far are really worthy of reconsideration at this point. This album is only eight tracks, so definitely a bit shorter than the other albums, but we still pick up references to honey, cherries and soda, corn from cornrow, turkey, noodles, cheddar, peaches, and taka vodka. I never imagined I'd be able to collect the lyrics necessary to form peach taka vodka from any artist in this series let alone Kendrick, but here we are. Time to die. I could talk about Damn more exhaustively, but I wanted to take this brief moment now to actually try the syrup sandwich from Humble and see how it tastes. We could definitely go into more detail about how it's both sad and tragic that people with food insecurity or people dealing with poverty really have to make the best of what they have, and what they have is basically two forms of high fructose corn syrup, but you know, then you gotta remember the video that you're watching right now. It's actually pretty good. Speaking of syrup sandwiches, Dam starts with that, chicken and biscuits, Parmesan, Doucet cognac, and Kool-Aid, steak, sugar, Grey Poupon mustard, gin, candy, chips, crackers, pizza, and brats, or brats. It's really great to see Kendrick actively supporting the Brat movement. Kendrick's most recent album as of August 31st of 2024 is Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. 
I don't really have too much to say about this one other than I really like the track Father Time, definitely a favorite of mine. And uh, this is actually the first Kendrick album I listened to front to back uh, when it came out. I know that's probably a strange entry point uh, into his body of work that he has considering all the other albums he has. Um, but I can say that it's definitely better than coming in after Not Like Us. I just think I have to say that. Miles Morales is not a very food-focused project, but despite that, we still get references to Popeyes and Chicken, Duck, Cherries, Paul Maison Brandy, Chips, Crackers, Buns, and Juice. You know, we've gone through a lot of ingredients, so let me break it down for you. Telling up all the references, we heard 49 unique ingredients across all the lyrics of all the songs in the entire discography, and 22 additional food-related references like completed dishes or restaurants, etc. For total food references by album, we got 12 from Section 80, 32 from Good Kid Mad City, 19 from To Pimp a Butterfly, 11 from Untitled Unmastered, 17 from Damn, and nine from Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. This will kind of include some double counting for specific types of alcohol and also separating chicken restaurants from the ingredient of chicken, which is kind of funny because this actually happened three separate times. Kendrick's total 71 food references puts him just barely over yay 68 food references in his discography, but far below Tyler the Creator, who had 110 total, which means Tyler is still our culinary lyric king. Our most popular ingredient was duck, which was referenced on five separate songs, with chicken and Hennessy being close runner-ups at four references each. All that being said, I will cut to the chase again. The dish that we're going to be taking a look at and making today is a maple blackberry bread pudding. Oh. Oh. Wait a second, Mr. Wave. That sounds too yummy and basic to be on this channel. You know, that's a good point, Mr. Lomar. I think it actually is too yummy and basic to be on this channel. Let me see if I can fuck it up somehow. I really don't like Drake Aubrey Graham. I'm actually going sweet this time for two reasons. One, this is a rare opportunity, or at least so far, where milk, eggs, and sugar are all available, despite not having flour, so I can't make a cake. Two, I have literally no seasonings. Not even salt, not even pepper. I checked and checked again and again, and I could not find a single reference to any form of seasoning anywhere on the discography. So Kendrick kind of hoed me there. <laughs> My Kendrickified maple blackberry bread pudding will consist of the nine ingredients you see displayed now, specifically including egg and sugar bread with jam and cheddar syrup parmesan. The syrup and cheddar are directly inspired from Mexican caperitata, a bread pudding typically enjoyed during Lent on Good Friday specifically. The palmaison brandy is something actually also not totally out of bounds for bread pudding, as many recipes call for it to impart a rich and deep flavor in the dessert. Even the seemingly most unorthodox ingredient I'm adding has been seen in southern or Caribbean variations of the dish to add some texture, sweetness, and some earthy tones. Just like the range and depth of Kendrick's music, I'm seeking to replicate that experience with this cross-cultural ingredient mashup bread pudding recipe. I felt a little young and handsome with the golden hour sunset light, so after posing with my yam for a little, forming a connection, you know, getting to know the guy, I peeled his skin off, cut him into pieces, and boiled his remains to get him nice and mushable for deployment in my custard mixture. Speaking of custard, I will form the basis of it by starting with three eggs, adding my half a cup of mashed yam I just made, my third of cup of nice maple syrup I got, two cups of whole milk, and a little over two tablespoons of that Paul Maison brandy. I tried unsuccessfully opening my sugar for a bit before discovering how to do so off camera. With my quarter cup of sugar added, I get to play the very fun Poffin Cooking minigame from Pokemon Platinum for a bit before finally adding my stale brioche bread cubes to the mixture. I had sliced up this brioche bread and set out the cubes on my counter the night before so they could firm up prior to being introduced to the custard liquid the next day, as is common procedure for bread puddings. I quickly realized when soaking them that my bowl wasn't going to be big enough for them to all be submerged, so I got a larger pot to house and soak my cubes. While leaving them alone for 10 minutes, I shredded some cheddar cheese, which don't worry, it's only around a third of a cup, 
and use some nonstick spray on my 8x8 glass baking dish. Our strategy here will be layering in the bread cubes and liquid along the bottom, adding a layer of whole blackberries and some cheddar cheese before repeating the cycle to use up all of our ingredients. I'm leaving my blackberries whole as I want them to be bursts of flavor once the dish is fully baked. Speaking of getting baked, I think this puppy is just about ready to hit the oven, so I'm gonna quickly wrap the top in aluminum foil and shove it into the cooking chamber right now. I am by no means a baker, so I'm kinda just going off vibes at this point, and I'm just gonna let the bread pudding bake for, I don't know, like 25 minutes before checking it, removing the foil, and then baking it again so that hopefully that top gets crispy and puffed up a little bit, as well as to remove any excess liquid. After repeatedly checking and baking more until it was fully complete, I finally took my Kendrick bread pudding out of the oven and let it rest on a trivet on my counter. I unfortunately can't see through the screen right now to see your first reaction to its final form, but I feel she looks pretty damn good. I have no choice now but to serve myself a nice helping and then move to my feasting table. Upon my first bite, I'm pleasantly served the sweet taste of maple syrup, which is great news because I didn't skimp and got the good stuff. I feel a little accent and aroma of the brandy on the back end of each bite, sort of as the ending note, but nothing remotely alcoholic, which is also good news that I didn't fuck that up as well. The yam provides a subtle earthiness to complement the syrup, the blackberries are providing great bursts of juicy tart flavor, and overall this dish, in my humble opinion, is objectively tasty. I find it hard when making these videos or eating the food to remove myself and be totally objective knowing how the dish was made and how much effort it took, but even with accounting for that bias, um, thinking that it's going to be a little bit more positive than it is, I'd be very happy to share helping with this with any of you guys or Kendrick any day of the week. I really hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, it feels really good to be back in the saddle, you know, making videos. Uh, I missed you guys. I'm sorry I've had like 50 lore updates. I'm obviously in a new spot right now. You know, we have the new set. I'm obviously using a mic, but um, you know, don't worry. We still have the iPad. iPad's still in action. That's a microwave classic. Um, if you like this video, please feel free to leave a comment on genuinely who you want to see next. Um, I already got some ideas of some people I want to do, but I, I always love reading the comments. It's definitely a favorite thing of mine by making YouTube videos. So please keep suggesting those. Uh, let me see if I'm missing anything else. No, uh, I think we're good. Honestly, thank you for watching the video. Um, very excited to be back, hopefully. Hopefully I make some more stuff in a decent pace, but we will see. Um, I love you all, and I will see you in the next one.